Today I'm going to give you a few tips so you don't accidentally drill through pipes and cables hidden in your walls. Hiya, welcome back to another Saturday morning tip video. Tip. I'm going to cut to the chase today because this is quite a big topic so I'm going to not ramble on too much about what's been going on. Hopefully my kids are watching this when they're older and they'll not be disturbing me on a beach sipping a San Miguel peacefully asking me to come and fix the pipe that they've just drilled through in the wall. Watch this video before you call me, I swear to God. So, as I say, today's tip video is all about not accidentally drilling through pipes and cables hidden in walls in your house. So far this year, judging by the number of screws I've bought, I think I've probably screwed in the region of 2,000 holes in walls and so far touch wood haven't accidentally hit any pipes or cables in fact I haven't accidentally hit any pipes or cables for best part of 15 years the last time I did it was a gas pipe in a floor and the pipe had been laid directly under the edge of a floorboard exactly where screws and nails are supposed to go still my own stupid fault for not checking first but you know my point is is that anyone can accidentally drill through a pipe or cable whether you're a diy person or you're working in the trade i can guarantee 99 percent you either have already drilled through a pipe or cable or you will generally at the point that you've done it you will never do it again it's a bit like getting an electric shock once you've got an electric shock you're a lot more careful in the future. But my point is, is that no one's immune from making mistakes. We all get complacent, but hopefully by following a few simple guidelines and tips, we can minimize that chance of going through a pipe or a cable in a wall and making life generally very unpleasant. So I'm generally gonna be talking about things from a UK perspective. A big shout out as well while I'm at it, I was just looking at subscriber stats and a good 50% of my subscribers are from across the pond in America, so a very warm welcome to all my American viewers over there. And then, so UK comes in um, at number one, but closely followed by America. Um, and then India is third, so hi to everyone in India. Canada's coming in fourth, Australia fifth, so I'm not gonna do any accents, but a very, very warm welcome to the channel wherever you are in the world. I hope you find this information useful, but a lot of these tips will apply no matter where you are anyway, so take what you can from it. One of the biggest things that you need to watch for in new build homes, especially in the UK, but again, I'm assuming this is across the planet and it's not just a UK thing, but pipes used to always be made of metal or nearly always be made of, of copper. And copper is pretty strong and easily gets picked up by a detector. One of the problems that we'll have now is that plastic pipes are used almost everywhere. I don't have a huge problem with plastic pipes. It's quite nice to have one continuous run of pipe work rather than joins that could potentially leak, etc, etc. I have no particular axe to grind either way on plastic or metal. But the problem with plastic pipes is that they don't show up on detectors. There should be, again as part of the regs in the UK, there should be a silver strip of foil behind pipes that are on solid walls. So for example, pipe work on dot and dab walls hidden behind the plasterboard. There should be like an aluminium strip or a, or a metal sticky strip behind the pipe specifically so that the pipe shows up on detectors. But that would appear to be another one of these kind of optional regulations um, that you only follow if you want to follow it. For whatever reason, it's largely ignored. In hollow walls, you don't have to put anything behind a plastic pipe with current regs that I'm aware, because it's on the basis that it's assumed that if it's in a hollow wall, there's some give to the pipe and it'll move out the road if you hit it. That is certainly not the case. If you hit a pipe in a hollow wall, depending on where the screw hits it, the screw will happily bite its way straight through the pipe like butter. Don't be complacent. Anyway, I hope you find this video useful. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. These tip videos, tip 
videos generally come out on a Saturday morning. Not every week, but I try to get them out every one to two weeks. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Pop in the comments below any horror stories or experiences you've had with drilling through pipes and electrics and stuff that you didn't want to drill through. I would love to hear your experiences of how the regulations work in different parts of the world. I'm, as I say, I'm generally speaking from a UK perspective and the regs here are fairly tight, but that doesn't mean that people actually bother to follow them. Obviously, bear in mind that a lot of the regs that I'm talking about here are only really applicable to new build homes or from whenever that regulation came out. If you're in an older property, the likelihood is those regs didn't even exist back then. Anyway, so let's imagine we we'll want to drill a hole in the wall here. So I'm gonna show you all of the things that I would consider in this whole area before drilling holes anywhere in this wall. So first of all, your first tip, rule out the obvious. Builders don't want to make walls funny shapes. They want flat walls. Flat walls are easy. As soon as you start making walls a weird shape, life becomes more awkward. So you can guarantee if your wall has a little box section like this in it, it's not there for decoration. There's something behind here that you don't want to drill into. And in this case, I can tell you that behind here, it's the soil stack for the house. And trust me, you don't want to be drilling into the soil stack. So this is our first danger zone that we're going to avoid. I'm going to mark everything with yellow tape. Second tip, work out your safe zones or your danger areas as it should be called. In the UK, we have what's known as the wiring regs, uh, 17th edition as it currently is in 2017, but obviously if you're watching this at a later date, that might have moved on, so double check your regs. This book is really boring. It gives you all of the specifications for how wiring should be done in houses in the UK. More so for new houses and new constructions um, where this would apply. I would suggest that you pick up, if nothing else, the on-site guide, which is kind of a condensed version uh, and a slightly more explained version of this behemoth of a book. So on page 60 of the on-site guide, of this version of it anyway, it explains where the safe zones in a wall are. They, they refer to them as safe zones, but really these are the danger areas. These are the areas where cables are most likely to run. By safe zones, they're, they're saying it's safe for the electrician to run cables in those areas. And those are, I'm not gonna go into this in a huge amount of detail, you can dig into this and read all of it because there's, there's various caveats and stuff that you should probably know about, but we're talking about drilling a hole in the wall for a picture. By this book, cables can be anywhere horizontally or vertically from a switch or an appliance on either side of the wall. So that's one of the important things that you need to consider. The caveat there is that the wall has to be, I think, less or less than 100 mil thick for that to apply. I'm not gonna measure the thickness of this wall. Let's just assume it is under 100 mil thick. It's probably not, but let's just err on the side of caution because you never know. So I know on this wall, there's a light switch on the other side of it. So the light switch on the other side is about here. So we can therefore assume that a cable might be running up the wall, horizontally or vertically, remember, here. What height are we at? About that height. Now, we've also got a socket down here. So there could be a cable running vertically or horizontally from this socket. So here's another danger area. And it could be up to the width of the appliance as well. So I'm just gonna show it with a bit of tape. And we've got a light switch here, same applies. I'm 
And what the regs also state is that wires can run up to 150 mil from the ceiling. Which is about that. All the way along that wall. All the way around here. And potentially up to 150 mil from the corner of a wall as well. So this whole area here, I've already got it marked out by that bit of tape and that bit of tape, but this whole area is a potential danger zone. And then finally, for water and gas pipes, as far as I'm aware, there aren't rules as strict as the electricity regs for where water and gas pipes can run. Please correct me in the comments if you know otherwise. But, we'll just rule out the obvious. Here's a radiator down here. So there must be pipes running to this somehow. It's a concrete floor, so the pipes almost certainly aren't going under the floor, although they might be, but they're probably running up this wall. And you can normally tell if the radiator's on, which this one isn't, but if the radiator's on, you can normally feel the warmth in the wall from the central heating pipe. So that's a really good indicator of do not drill where you feel warm bits of wall. So I'm just gonna kind of assume that this entire area up here is gonna be potentially a dangerous place to drill. Obviously you don't have to mark your wall out like this, but you just need to have a rough idea of where are the most likely areas that are gonna potentially cause a problem. Oh, I haven't done a horizontal one from that socket. So there we go. Our wall is a patchwork of areas that we know are either potentially safe or potentially unsafe to drill into. So we've got we're horizontal and vertical from that socket, horizontal and vertical from la that light switch, horizontal and vertical from the light switch on the other side of that wall. We've got the potential area where pipes from this radiator are probably running up the wall, and we've got the boxing in the corner for the soil stack. That's not to say cables and pipes aren't gonna be running up any of these other areas. Depends when your house was built and whether the person who built it bothered to follow the building regs. There could still be pipes and cables in the areas that we'll call the safe areas, but it's just in these areas marked with the yellow tape. Those are the areas where we'll have to be really careful. So our spot here, where we want our hole, we're in a safe place. We're in a place where there shouldn't be any pipes or cables. As I say, not to say there isn't. So my third tip for you is always use a detector. This isn't a particularly fancy one, it's a, a Bosch one, but I always, always use it. I know the one time I get complacent and I don't bother will be the one time that someone's decided to run a pipe or a cable in an area where they shouldn't have run a pipe or cable and I end up going straight through it. With a detector like this, this has got kind of three indicators on it. It's got a light that turns red when it's near metal. It also beeps. And it's got an indicator on the display. The beep and the light, I don't pay that much attention to. I'm mainly looking at the display indicator because this gives me a distance range for how far the metal is away. So as I get closer, I don't know if you can see, but as I get closer to the metal, the little scale on here goes up. And that's the thing that I'm really looking for. So checking around here, I've got a green light, it's not beeping and I've got nothing on the display. You do sometimes get walls that are filled with, for example, Celotex insulation. The Celotex is covered in a, in a foil and the detector can pick up an entire wall of the, of the foil. So if you go onto a wall and your detector is constantly beeping and your display is always at about the same level, you know it's probably a wall that's just got a foil insulation in it or something like that. But what I'm looking for is that level going up or down because you might have foil insulation 
but then a pipe, a metal pipe or a metal cable or something like that. And you'll see the scale go up as you go over it. So here, I'm fairly safe. And by the way, don't put 100% faith in the detector. Even if the detector tells you there's nothing in the wall, don't assume it's correct because it can only go so deep and it depends what your wall's made of, whether or not it can successfully detect what's underneath your top layer of plasterboard or whatever. For more dense materials, for dense plasterboard, you can get like concrete boards, you can get um, maybe even solid wood and plywood and stuff like that. It's more difficult for the detector to detect what's through the wall. And in those cases, you need to be a lot more careful because the likelihood is the detector hasn't given you a true representation of what's behind there. But I'm fairly confident there's nothing behind here. So my fourth tip for you today, always when drilling into a wall, if possible, use a blunt masonry bit. You don't need a sharp drill bit for drilling into walls. 99% of the time, a blunt bit will be absolutely fine. Unless your wall's made of metal or wood, but that's probably not gonna be the case. For plasterboard, brick, blocks, anything like that, at least in the first instance, use a nice blunt masonry bit. Nothing too sharp, definitely not a wood bit or um, an HSS bit or anything like that. I'm gonna go into the wall here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently go in and I'm gonna stop. But this takes me on to my fifth tip for you. If you've drilled into the wall and you feel like you might have hit something or you feel that the bit of the drill has made be rubbed past a cable or a pipe and you're not 100% that it's clear behind there, just get anything and feel through the hole. If you think you have hit something, I would suggest you use an insulated screwdriver just in case you've drilled through an electric cable and you don't want to be giving yourself an electric shock. In this case, I know that there's nothing behind there. I'm just using a little screwdriver just to have a little feel. And it's also to feel, you can get a really good idea of what the wall's made of behind. And I can feel from that, that, that it's block work, it feels soft, I can, I can pretty much poke the screwdriver into the wall so it's not brick. So because I know it's not brick, I know I don't need to get my SDS drill out. Normal hammer drill will be fine with that, but I can feel there's nothing behind there, so I'm safe to move on. If you're still not 100% after feeling in there, worst case scenario, make the hole a bit bigger and you can use a torch to look into the hole and you can see if there's anything there and you can also get a better idea. Sometimes you'll maybe run into like a sheet of plywood behind the wall. That can be quite misleading as to what the wall's made of. It's a, a great material for attaching stuff into. But it's also a great material for hiding pipes and other nasties in the wall. So you can get a good idea from having a little look through the hole. As I say, if needs be, just make the hole a bit bigger. It'll take you five minutes to fill a hole in the wall if you discover that it's a bad place for drilling and it's a much better outcome than going through a pipe. So from all of that, we can work out that we're safe to go all the way into this wall to the required depth for drilling. And again, you're constantly feeling on the drill. If suddenly something changes and it feels like, because what can sometimes happen is you might have an area of wall where underneath the wall it's been plastered over with a cable behind it and you're just drilling through that plaster and then behind it is a cable. And if you feel that something suddenly changed and feels a bit different, just stop immediately. Don't keep going. If something doesn't feel right, stop. It's a much, much better option to just start looking into the alternatives, maybe putting the hole somewhere else or making the hole a bit bigger to have a look what's in there rather than drilling through a pipe or cable. Trust us, you don't want to go down that route. And that's it, so we've got the hole done. I know it sounds complicated, but all of this, you can think about in a matter of 20 seconds. Am I in a safe zone? Has the detector picked anything up? Does it feel like there's anything in the wall? 
Am I using a nice blunt bit that's not gonna go through anything? If I'm still unsure, have a bit of a feel around, and if you're still unsure, make the hole a bit bigger and have a look inside. But with all that in mind, my seventh tip, never nail or screw directly into the wall. Always drill first and use a plug. Unless your wall is completely made of wood, then you can maybe risk going straight in, assuming there's not cables behind the wood, and if you've got a good idea of how thick the wood is. Generally speaking though, your wall's gonna be made of either plasterboard or plaster over brick or block. So you should be using plugs and screws. I never use picture hooks with nails to put pictures up. It's far too risky. Picture hoop nails are useless for solid walls. They will not, they're not gonna go into brick. You're gonna struggle getting them into block. So really the only thing that picture hooks are good for anyway is hollow walls. And the nails on picture hooks are razor sharp and they will go straight through a pipe or cable if you haven't already checked whether there's something behind there. I do not take the risk for any customers. I never nail straight into the wall. I don't like nails and walls anyway because the nails always come loose over time and it's just too risky. Just don't bother, use screws. Trust us, I've hung thousands and thousands of pictures in me time and I have, to this date, never gone through a pipe or cable. If you've gone through your layer of plasterboard and you've found that there's a stud behind there, a stud is probably one of the best things that you can find in the wall for attaching into. Nothing will give you a better fixing than a nice big wood screw straight into the stud, no plugs needed but you need to be 100% sure that you are going into a stud and you're not going into a pipe or cable or anything like that. A wood screw, wood screws are razor sharp. Some of them have inbuilt drill bits built into the tip of the screw. They will go through a pipe or cable like butter. If I was to drill up here straight into the wall with a screw, it would go happily straight through the central heating pipe and you would not know. You, you, just, you wouldn't know really until you've taken the screw out and water starts coming out. And then you've got a very unpleasant time of it. And then my final tip, eight tips in one video, incredible. My final tip in all of this is never assume that the person before you has done their job properly. Just because we've worked out where safe zones in the wall should be and where pipes and cables in the wall should be doesn't mean that's where they're gonna be. Just like this wall here in a brand new house in the UK that has an electric cable running all the way up the middle of the wall. There's no switches or sockets anywhere. It's outside of the safe zones and basically whoever's put that cable in either doesn't know what the regulations are or they've chosen to ignore them. And obviously also bear in mind, in older houses, the older the house, the less regulations were around at the time. If you're in an old property, basically forget everything I told you at the beginning of the video because those regulations didn't exist. The wires could run anywhere. They could run diagonally right across. They could be running in circles. You could have pipes running in knots and crosses shapes on the wall. You have to be especially careful in older properties. But the general rule of thumb is expect the worst, don't be complacent and you'll be absolutely fine. It shouldn't take you any longer than two minutes to drill a hole in the wall without going through a pipe. But hopefully the tips I've given you today will be of some use. If you've got any other tips that you would like to add, pop them in the comments below. If you've gone through a pipe or a cable at some point, I had one very unlucky customer who in the process of putting up a TV bracket, on the first hole, they drilled through the coaxial cable for the aerial. On the second hole, they drilled through an electric cable. And on the third hole, they drilled through a central heating pipe. And eventually they gave up. They had to get an emergency electrician out and an emergency plumber and then they had to get me out to fix the wall and put the bracket up properly. I think the whole experience probably costs them more than the television itself. I'm not wanting to scare you into not putting stuff up on walls. As I say, touch wood. It's been the best part of 15 years since I've drilled through anything accidentally that I didn't want to drill through. 
And that was my own stupid fault. It was complacency was the problem. Complacency is the biggest thing that will get you. The one time you don't use your detector, the one time you decide, oh, I've got a, an HSS bit on the drill, that'll do. That'll be the time where there's a pipe behind that wall and you go straight through it and you've got a very unpleasant day. Don't be complacent. Follow the tips that I've mentioned. And worst case scenario, make sure you know how to switch the gas off. Make sure you know how to switch the water off and you know where the stopcock is. Make sure you know how to switch your mains electricity off to the house. And keep a phone to hand because if you go through a pipe, you're gonna be stuck with your finger on that pipe, stopping the water coming out while you're on the phone to someone to get them to come and help. Thank you for watching. See you next time, maybe next week. Not sure, I've got a couple of big edits that I need to get done again. I need to uh, take all this yellow tape off the wall and hope it doesn't rip any of the paint off. Things I do for YouTube.